Nice All right, welcome to the camper. Yeah, we haven't done this for a while. We, uh, we try to be somewhere special, like at a camp, or uh, what was that, a rest harvest area. Harvest Oh, rest area. Yeah, we're at a harvest house, that didn't work out, um, no service. So we ended up coming to, we are going to go to a rest area. We but, did sleep at the harvest house. It, yeah. was, it was very nice. Very yeah. quiet. It was a monkey sanctuary, or yeah, is that how you say it? Yeah. Uh, they a rescue take, type yeah, thing. Yeah, they take monkeys that have been used for like uh, medical purposes, and then they give them a nice home, and they take care of them. I can't remember how many monkeys she said they had. A lot. They have a lot of monkeys. Apparently she knows them all by name. They were going to tour us through, and it was going to take us like two hours. So Yeah, three hours actually is the average, I think. Okay. But we did not do that, because they also said that children can become frightened. <laughs> Because the monkeys grab them. <laughs> Guess they relate. Kids that they think are monkeys, little kids. So they don't like little kids. Um, so anyway, uh, we're at a truck stop. Is where we end up going here. So we got to be kind of quick. It's not very exciting. No, but you get the kids in the background. So who knows what's going to happen there? They're, they're doing their schoolwork, but they're all a little cranky. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this camper is full of joy. Yes. <laughs> Not sure what their uh, thing is, but some, anyway. Some said they look sleepy, so they don't want to be on camera. It's gonna, it's <laughs> gonna be a good day. Good morning, everyone. Grandma's on here, both yeah. grandmas. We did get up a little bit earlier, but not that early, so get it going. It's just, they have a really good life. They get to just lay in their beds for as long as they want. And that's right. Not today, <laughs> so they're not happy about that, but that's okay, we got some driving to do and they can rest. Yeah, so we'll pray, and uh, we are in Matthew 9 and Psalm 63, right? Okay, I'm trying to remember what I, what I wrote down. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. I have uh, I have to redo one of my training classes, which I'm frustrated about, because uh, I'm going to have one of the kids do it, though, because I took the whole class, but they didn't give me credit for it because I lost service. So hopefully today we do not lose service. It's one of my prayers that our it's, it's an online live class and so it uh, for real estate and uh, I'm gonna have one of the kids help me do it so we gotta they gotta be live for me anyway um, so father I thank you for today I thank you for safe travels I thank you for just uh, a good drive Lord we thank you for your word and uh, just your presence Lord with us thank you for your guidance Lord, I ask for your just favor and blessing upon each one today, Lord. And uh, may you just continue to go before us and uh, just guard behind us, Lord. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you, uh, you lead us. Lead us by your Holy Spirit to the things that you uh, you have for us today, Lord. And uh, Father, may we just focus on you, be about you, and uh, not uh, all the other distractions around us. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So you're in the camper. You can see our house on wheels. And this is when it's all slid in. Yeah. So that's why you can see both sides right now. It's we're, yeah. This is how we travel. We got about four or five hours of driving today, and um, kind of leading, going north out of Florida. So. I think we're getting into Central Time Zone today. Yes. So oh, we, we're gonna gain an hour. We're gonna have to get up earlier tomorrow to do the soap. <laughs> and we got that too. Um, but huh. that's cool. We're back in central time zone, which is wild that Florida is in central time zone, a portion of it. Yeah, so the panhandle. Far west side. Yeah, wow. Okay. We'll be fairly in the central time zone. Let me get to my Bible. Um, so, for scriptures for today. I am kind of at the end of it. I. Well, a couple things stood out to me in the reading. So on Matthew uh, 9, the one was... Um, I'm at 18. You're at 18. Why don't you go first, and then I'll talk. Mine is uh, 29 and 38, 37. Okay. I'm just going to read this whole section, though, because it's Matthew 18 through 26. Mine says, Jesus heals and raises the dead. <laughs> Yay. Yes. While Jesus was still speaking, an influential 
Jewish leader approached, this is Jarius, approached and knelt before him saying, help me, my daughter has just died. Please come and place your hand upon her so that she will be alive again. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Suddenly a woman came from behind Jesus and touched the tassel of his prayer shawl for healing. She had been suffering from continual bleeding for 12 years, but had faith that Jesus could heal her. For she kept saying to herself, if I could only touch his prayer shawl, I would be healed. Just then Jesus turned around and looked at her and said, my daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has healed you. And instantly she was healed. When Jesus finally entered the home of the Jewish leader, he saw a noisy crowd of mourners wailing and playing a funeral something on their flutes mm. a funeral song we'll say he told them you must leave for the little girl's not dead she's only asleep then right. everyone began to ridicule him after he had made the crowd go outside he went up to the little girl's room and gently took hold of her hand she immediately stood to her feet and the news of this incredible miracle spread everywhere so amazing um <clears throat> it reminded me of when we just read mark Six, I think it was and the same story Mark tells and then I, I guess Luke tells it as well from a physician's perspective and I keep going back to the sermon that um, from Stephen Furtick at, at Elevation Church and so we listened to it last night we it's a good uh, one Elena and I and Corbin did some coloring while we listened to it and I wasn't necessarily going to keep listening to it but it's really good I was like Oh, this is probably my third time listening to it now, and so I realize that a lot of the things I've said on our study have come from that one sermon. Here I thought it was like three different sermons. So it's, it's super good. But, um, and I can link that up to here. It just gives you a really great perspective of um, kind of like, it always reminds me of like the chosen, how you put yourself there and what was all going on. And so that's what I was doing last night. And I didn't necessarily go the route that Stephen Burdick was. I was more putting myself in the place of, um, of Jesus. And like that he, in that moment, so here he is going along, Jarius is freaking out, his daughter has died, and he's like, I have one hope left. And here is a woman who has suffered from a medical condition that has never gotten better for 12 years, I think it's interesting that Jarius' daughter was 12 and this woman had been suffering mm. for 12 years. And she also has a hope that she possibly, I think I've talked about this before too, but like she, she dared to hope again. Because I'm sure she had a lot of hope in each time she went to a different physician, each time she went to a different medicine manner, whatever it looked like back then. And she was disappointed every single time because she hadn't been healed yet. And so how do you hope again, knowing that the disappointment is terrible, it feels horrible, and like, why do I even put myself in that place of hope if I'm gonna be disappointed again? And I just love that here, I, I see it like, here's Jesus, here comes Jarius, here comes the woman, and they both are coming at him with this hope that only he can really satisfy. Like, who else is gonna raise his daughter from the dead and this other woman knows that there's nobody else that can can fix her because it, she's she's explored all of her options. She's out of money. She she doesn't have anybody to help her anymore. She's out of options. Is it starting? I yeah. Take it. Just, uh, I'm just gonna watch that and if any questions come up, just answer them. <laughs> Jay's gonna take my test for me. Uh, but what I love is that Jesus in that moment was totally outside of time. Because Jarius is like, now. You know, like, you got to come now. My daughter has already died. I don't, I'm, I would just start losing hope at that point. Like, oh, I don't know. Should I even still go to him? But he does. He's like, this guy has done some incredible things. And here he is, a Jewish leader. And the, my side notes also said he could have even been the Sanhedrin. So he was like a well-respected Jewish leader. And here he is putting his faith into Jesus and not all the works, all the mm. things. So what I love though, is that Jesus, even though being pressured maybe by Jairus and his followers or whatever it might have been that he brought with him, wow. he had time for the one. He had time for the woman 
even though he didn't even necessarily, she was healed, I believe, the moment that she touched the garment. And so he didn't even really have to turn around and say, who touched me? You know, like, I, Matthew doesn't go into it as much as Mark does. But it, he's like, who touched me? And the disciples are like, well, what do you mean who touched you? Like, everybody's touching you. Everybody's pressing in. He's like, no, I felt power leave me. Like, who, who, who did my healing go out to? He wanted to know, not like in an accusing manner, but like, who, I want to meet this woman. Who, where, where is she? And, uh, you know, and then and instantly she is healed. But I just love that he took the time for her, even mm -hmm. though. So what was going through my mind was, um, I was just telling the kids the other day, we were talking about strokes for some reason. Oh, because of the COVID vaccine, <laughs> the Johnson and Johnson vaccine. So we got to, this is how we do our science. You know, something comes up, whatever. We're, we don't really watch the news, but we hear about some disease and then I just tell them, we just learn about it. And so we were learning about strokes. And I was telling them what, when I worked in the hospital, what a code stroke is and what it meant. So if somebody comes in, or we know that somebody's coming in based on a 911 call that there was a possible stroke, there are, there's a code stroke that is called over the intercom of the hospital. And for the pharmacy, that meant you jumped into action making this particular medication that bursts, makes clots burst, um, bust up essentially in the brain so that they don't, the blood doesn't keep getting occluded to the rest of their body. Good push. <laughs> huh? Are you pushing some? Don't, don't push anything. Just watch it. All you have to do is just sit here. Okay? Don't push anything. Dad doesn't, doesn't have time to do this again. Anyway, but you're you're just you're spraying into action because minutes. This is my point. Minutes make a difference in a stroke patient. It's minutes to lose your ability to swallow. Minutes to to have now paralysis in your left side. Minutes to be able to never walk again or whatever it might be. And that's what I was thinking of Jarius. Like he had that kind of urgency. Like whoa, like if he can raise people from the dead, then it has got to be minutes that make a difference. Because Lazarus hadn't been raised from the dead yet, which was three days later. And so he didn't know about that testimony. And so here he is like, I got minutes, you know, and Jesus is like, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> but I first want to meet this, this woman behind me. And I do love how uh, Pastor Stephen Furtick says, she is the only one that he calls daughter in all the scriptures. He says, daughter, you are healed. And he changed her identity from the woman with the issue of bleeding to daughter, which is super powerful. So yeah. there's just so much in this like small section of scripture. But really what was sticking out for me was that Jesus stopped for the one. And as we've been talking about this ministry, encounter the one, I, I was like, wow, like we... To be like Jesus is to stop for the one, to see the one in front of us, to see the one that that has a need, to see the one that needs a smile, you know, whatever it may be that just needs a, a reassuring hello, how are you, whatever it might be, just to be seen and to be heard. And if you get to know somebody better, to listen to them, to really listen and not have to fix everything. <laughs> It's right. always my thing. I'm like, no. do you want me just to listen or do you want advice? If you just want to listen, that I'll, I can do that. I can be that person for you. It's a good process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's obviously my application as well. It's just to think about how Jesus, being outside of time and knowing that he has the victory, he was going to raise. I mean, he picked up her, the little girl's hand, the 12-year-old's hand. She immediately stood to her feet, completely restored. The woman with the bleeding issue, who he calls daughter, completely restored with just her touching the fringe of his garment. Like, one, everything, anything is possible. Miracles are, are happening, are alive, are well. And um, he has time. He has time to, uh, to notice you, to hear your prayers, and to heal you, whatever it might be. I noticed, uh, I thought it was interesting about who you surround yourself with stood out to me again. Mm -hmm. And when uh, when Jesus got to the girl, you know, they already basically said, well, she's dead. Yeah. And it's like, if you stay around people that are just not believing, that, um, you know, you lose your faith. And like, Jesus comes in, you know, and there's flute players, noisy crowd, and like, go away, the girl is not dead, but ah. asleep. Like, 
Jesus says, get out of here. I don't want any of this negativity around me. And he's like, everyone, he got everybody out. And they were laughing at him. They're laughing at Jesus. And then, yeah. then the crowd was put outside. And then he went in and went in and took the girl by the hand. And she got up. And so it just was, I don't know, it jumped out at me. It's just that when he got there, they already were basically like, nope, she's dead. Don't don't bother. You know, already given up on her. Given like, up. Yeah, there's no hope. No. Yeah. No, let's, let's stay with this. And Jesus like, get these guys out of here. This is not, not, they don't know. <laughs> they are not helping. Yeah. Let's get all the believers around their, me. Their words are not bringing life. <laughs> um, so on that same note, the next one, he, he, Jesus heals the blind and mute. Oh yeah. And I never caught this. I don't think before. Um, but he says, when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked him, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He, they're asking for him and he says, Son of David, have mercy on us. And they wanted to be healed of their, their blindness. And uh, they replied, yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, will it be done to you? And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one knows about this, which they did not listen to because they went and told everybody. <laughs> so anyway, I'm not sure. But there's probably a sermon in all that too. Um, I just thought it was interesting. According to your faith, according to your faith, yeah, will be done to you. And it's just like, yes, Lord, increase my faith. I want to have faith for all of these things. And it it seems, you know, obviously he heals people. You have little faith, and he still heals. I just, uh, as I was reading it, it just was, I need to have more faith. Just walk in more faith. And what does that look like? I think it's action. You know, everything is here is an action related. Like she went up and touched Jesus' garment. Um, you know, they come and chased after him and said, Lord, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Like just that action of the faith step of crying out to him. Yep. And just in doing that, the healing comes. And so uh, I think many times in my own life, I, I just doubt it. It's like, well, or maybe it's not that bad. You know, Sarah talked about this yesterday. Paul Rapley says, well, you know, we all say we're healthy. Yet, you know, something hurts, aches, whatever. Um, we have allergies, whatever those little things are. It's like the Lord can heal us of it's all those things. It's just cold. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, just to believe in that, you know, and it's, yeah. There's all kinds of things coming at us. So, like, why does why does some heal and some aren't and all these little things and I don't know. I think it, it maybe has to do with our faith, our belief, our where are we at. And um, so anyway, that's what I was taking away from that. And then 37 just jumped out of me, of course, just speaking to me. It says, then he said to those his disciples, the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And it's just, that's my prayer today, is that, uh, Father, we just ask that you send out more workers into this harvest field, Lord, that you give us more courage and boldness to step out and love the people around us, Lord. Yes. And uh, Lord, that just to come into agreement with um, verse 12, where it says, you desire mercy, not sacrifice, Lord. Yeah. So may we release mercy and not, not think of serving you as a sacrifice, Lord, but it's actually just, it's who we are. It's who you are. And that out of love, we just, we cannot but do that. And so, Father, I just ask that uh, you just put that burning desire in our heart, Lord, to show mercy and love to all those around us, Lord, and that we don't see it as a sacrifice, but it's actually out of a, a love for you, Lord, that we want to go after the one. We want to go after the people around us and, uh, and share the truth, Lord, break them free from the lies that they're believing and uh, give them hope, Lord. So may we continue to go out and just release hope everywhere we go pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Can I wrap that up with Psalm 63? Thing, but at least like you're like 3 hours or something like that. Like, <laughs> okay. Like I'll wrap it up. <laughs> Weird. Uh, um just when Josh was praying, I was thinking, you know, to not think of it as a sacrifice because then it, it can sometimes feel hard even though that's not Jesus's intent. But um Psalm 63, at least in the Passion Translation, I didn't read it anywhere else. It just says, I'm energized every time I enter your heavenly sanctuary to seek more of your power and drink in more of your glory. For your tender mercies mean more to me than life itself. How I love and praise you, God. So I would even enter in there, how I love to serve you, God. 
Daily I will worship you passionately and with all of my heart. My arms will wave to you like banners of praise. I will overflow with praise when I come before you, for the anointing of your presence satisfies me like nothing else. And so if we think about serving Jesus in that way, like it's an overwhelming love for him that comes out of us um, into, like comes out of us in the action of serving, then it's like, yeah, for nothing satisfies me, like nothing else satisfies me like this does to serve you and to be obedient to your name. I don't know. I think that's a beautiful picture of, of praise through obedience and serving the Lord, that we can be a worker in the harvesting fields. That's so good. We're already blocked. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Lord, fix what is us. the psalm address? It is Psalm 63, starting in. I started reading in verse 2. The whole thing is very good. Brian is saying hi, Caden and Garrett. Hey. I can't even see who's where's Garrett at. Right Elena's hiding. Elena's hiding. She says she looks sleepy. Yeah, and uh, if uh, <laughs> Jay Cooliard's on here, it's his yeah. birthday today. So happy birthday, Jay. Jay and Tracy, they uh, they follow us regularly as well. So yeah, they were our neighbors, our townhome neighbors before we had kids. Wow, so we've been friends a long time. Well, actually, Jay didn't live there then. Jay and Tracy got married after we had moved. But wonderful people, wonderful friends. It's been so good to reconnect with them through this soap study. Yep. <laughs> like, like many of you, it's such Bring a great tool to uh, be able to communicate <laughs> daily with each of you and get to know you better. All right. Well, we bless you. Tomorrow is uh, next chapter of Matthew, which is Matthew 10 and Psalm 141. We're jumping all over the place in the Psalms. And we are still listening to 1 Samuel. Uh, I think we're like on 23 tonight or something like that. But it goes right along with these Psalms. So it's interesting. They're not including it in the reading, but it's like, hey, David wrote this while he was hiding in um, Judea or Judah. Judah. And that's like where we're at in the first Samuel right now but it's I don't know it's good you guys like it right first Samuel David and Saul and Jonathan <laughs> he's tired <laughs> all right I can't read any of your comments but I love you guys blessings on your day and uh, we'll see you in central time zone at some point today or tomorrow sounds good have a good one all right. See ya. Bye. Bye.